Hello everyone, my name is Filip Maric and I'm a PhD student at the Space Center of Serial Autonomous Robotics Lab at the University of Toronto Institute for Aerospace Studies in Canada, jointly with the Laboratory for Autonomous Mobile Robotics at the University of Zagreb in Croatia. I will be talking about the work done by my co-author Matthew Giamu and myself on performing inverse kinematics for serial kinematic chains using sum of squares optimization. The inverse kinematics problem is one of the fundamental problems in robotics, which involves finding a set of joint states corresponding to a desired end effector link pose. Procedures for solving inverse kinematics are therefore an integral part of motion planning pipelines in robotic manipulation, where they are usually used to find configurations corresponding to a desired goal state. The figure on the right shows a simple instance of the problem where a joint configuration theta is found that brings the end effector of a planar manipulator to a desired position P. Most inverse kinematics approaches parametrize the kinematic model using joint angles. While in specific cases this allows for elegant closed form solutions, generally it results in long trigonometric expressions which need to be solved numerically. Moreover, in the general case, it is difficult to characterize the solution set as redundant manipulators admit an infinite number of solutions for a desired end effector pose. Finally, including additional constraints such as joint limits or obstacles will either involve post-processing the number of analytical solutions or, in the general case, adding more constraints to the numerical optimization. Instead, we consider an alternative kinematic model that is parametrized by the positions of individual links. Robot structure is enforced by constraining the distances between consecutive pairs of vertices such that they equal the length of the corresponding link. Additionally, we constrain the positions of individual vertices that correspond to the manipulator base and end effector. Symmetric joint angle constraints can also be added as inequality constraints onto distances between opposite endpoints of consecutive links. We then proceed and transform the inequality constraints to equalities by introducing redundant variables s, resulting in a higher dimensional decision variable y. This allows us to define a nearest point quadratically constrained quadratic program, or QCQP, in which the squared distance from a random decision variable is used to induce a unique solution to the problem, even when there are redundant degrees of freedom. The aforementioned formulation will clearly result in a larger number of variables and constraints than the angle parametrization. However, we can now formulate all of our constraints as quadratic equalities. More importantly, since only certain pairs of vertices appear in the constraints together, the problem has a unique sparsity pattern. These two facts will allow us to exploit global polynomial optimization techniques, which would be infeasible otherwise either due to the density of the problem or the trigonometric expressions involved in the constraints. We've demonstrated that inverse kinematics can be written as an optimization problem with quadratic cost and constraints. Next, we'll relax this non-convex polynomial optimization problem into a convex semi-definite program that can be quickly solved with generic interior point method-based solvers in our paper, we demonstrate in theorem 2 that this relaxation leads to a certifiably globally optimal solution, provided the nearest neighbor point C is close enough to a valid manipulator configuration. The sparse bounded sum of squares technique used to produce a convex semi-definite relaxation of our problem formulation is very technically involved. We briefly outlined the steps here, but please see the references in our paper for further details. We begin by converting our problem into a standard form used by the solver. This form is then used to relax the feasible set with the convex cone of sum of squares polynomials of bounded degree. Finally, a semi-definite description of the cone of sum of squares polynomials is used to transform the relaxed problem into a convex semi-definite program that exploits the natural sparsity of our kinematic constraints. Theorem 2 in our paper describes conditions which, when met, guarantee that our convex relaxation produces a global optimum of the original non-convex QCQP. Essentially, 
The theorem establishes the existence of a ball of finite radius surrounding feasible configurations, within which nearest point parameters C produce a tight convex relaxation. This allows us to guarantee that a global optimum can be found and certified in many cases. We also note that when convex relaxations are infeasible, they produce a certificate of infeasibility for the original problem which is useful for identifying unreachable end effector goals. In summary, we cast the inverse kinematics problem as a quadratically constrained quadratic program. This allows us to formulate a nearest point cost function that identifies a unique solution amongst infinite solutions for redundant manipulators. Our cost function also allows us to prove a theorem that guarantees global convergence for certain choices in the nearest point. Finally, the sparse bounded sum of squares algorithm is used to transform the non-convex polynomial optimization problem into a convex semi-definite program that can then be used to find a global optimum. Our experiments explored our algorithm's performance on redundant planar and spherical manipulators. Displayed in each subplot are results for a 10 degree of freedom manipulator with one of five random configurations as the nearest point in our cost function. Each pixel represents a goal position for the end effector. Note that the majority of goal positions produce the certifiably globally optimal solution displayed in blue. We suspect that many of the suboptimal cases displayed in red are due to floating point numerical approximations and convergence tolerances in our solvers, as we have been able to recover feasible solutions from these points also. Finally, the gray points were all correctly certified as infeasible by our method. Summarizing our results, our method achieved a 99% success rate for joint limited spherical kinematic chains with up to 12 degrees of freedom. Moreover, the certificate produced by the solution method can prove that a given end effector pose is unreachable given the link lengths and joint limits. Finally, the sparsity exploiting property of the sparse bounded sum of square solver results in computation times in the order of 100 milliseconds. In our future work, we aim to extend our formulation to more general 3D manipulators consisting of joints with single axes of rotation. We are also exploring whether the guarantees and performance of our formulation extends to obstacles in the workspace. The above extensions could lead to many potential applications in areas such as motion planning and workspace determination. Thank you all for listening, and we are interested in hearing your questions and comments.